and welcome to Tooth Tail and Talcum Powder. Thank you very much, Godheart Gaming, for that host. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Zelda, very excited they didn't get an ad. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, cool. Hi, everyone. This is Tooth Tail and Talcum Powder. Let's go. Before we go round, let me spam the opening messages. I remember how to open my own show. Um, check out all of the social links, all of the places you can find us online. All of our uh, sponsor information. Please check out Mage Hand Press and Bird and the Storm Publishing, who make this all possible. Uh, and also, uh, check out all of the websites where you can get 10 to 15% discount on nearly all of your tabletop RPG needs. Um, there's also a tweet, and if you retweet the tweet, that really helps us out with all the tweeting. Uh, let's go around and say hello to everyone, starting with that. That is my real name, Heavenly. Oh, hi, Heavenly. Hello, everyone. It's me, Heavenly. Uh, that is my real name. And I'm here. I'm the DM. And like all DMs, I am pre I'm prepared. You know, I woke up on time. I was ready on time. Um, <laughs> every <laughs> everything's going exactly according to plan. I didn't just wake up 17 minutes ago in a panic. Uh, because my phone died while I was sleeping. That's not what happened, okay? So don't ask. Don't imply <laughs> that. It's not what happened. We're all fine, okay? <laughs> <laughs> With that, uh, why don't we carry on clockwise around the screen and go to Shakespeare? Hi! So I am Shakespeare, also known as Shakes. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shakespeare. There are only two E's. Don't ask me why. Um, and I'm playing Mr. Blabby, who is a lovely giant soul sorcerer, who is also a giant amorphous blob. It's like playing living marmalade. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you very much also <laughs> for the subscription. I had to go and look on the official Twitch app to see who it was, because apparently you're, you're anonymous. I'm still you're, anonymous! You're anonymous again. You seem to flit in and out of being anonymous and not anonymous. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's very I mean, strange. I thought it was the queer in your name, and then I thought they'd yeah. got rid of it for, like, Pride Month, but... It, like, comes back and then goes away again, and then comes back. I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Uh, next around the screen, we have Gloss and Gadgets. Oh, hi, Leonie! Oh, hi, Scratchicus Academy and everybody. I am Glass and Gadgets, also known as Leone, and I like it that way around, so I'm not going to correct it. Um, I'm in chat as Goldheart Gaming. Uh, don't ask me why, I can't be bothered to log out and log into my Glass and Gadgets account. Um, I am playing Aristomachi Tecos, Minotaur Monk, and Mommy Tor. Oh, I, am, I am responsible for taking care of the group, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Looks we'll like see. I think we take care of each other and cause about as much mess. We will find out. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, I think that definitely feels right. You know, I don't. I definitely don't think I'm looking after anyone. Um, yeah, I don't think. I don't think I am either. <laughs> you take care of the baby sometimes, Mister Blobby. You take the night shift because you don't sleep. When, when I'm not trying to drown it in milk, accidentally, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, Mister Bobby did accidentally waterboard the baby. I Only don't have bit. hands. It's hard. <laughs> Only a little bit though. Um, last but certainly not least, oh hi, Tommy Imperator Pengu. Hello there, oh, Imperator <clears throat> Pengu. Is that that's how you normally say it? Imp Imperator. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it pronounced all sorts of different ways. Imperator, Imperator. I pronounce it Imperator, but I've heard it pronounced about twenty different ways. So. Um, whatever floats your boat at this point. <laughs> um, I'm Imperator. Thank you. God, every time we start talking about pronunci pronunciation of stuff revolving, like, my <laughs> character name or my names, I start doubting my own pronunciation, and I think, <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, did I pronounce that the way I usually pronounce it, or do I pronounce it the way that someone just pronounced it at me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's we too early in the morning for all of this. Uh, <laughs> I'm Imperator Bangu. I'm Tommy. I play our our good, good armor dad, uh, Asuka, um, who I think has one of the hardest jobs of all here, trying to raise a teenager. <laughs> 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 and try to try try to try to try to make a try to make a man out of Ned, uh, <laughs> and uh, also uh, Asuka hasn't done anything. They are totally innocent. <laughs> Whatever those wanted posters may say. Well, we're all on the wanted I'm, posters. We're merely we're merely guilty by association. Yeah. <laughs> 
I totally agree. Uh, I play Gerbil Kent, who is also only guilty by association, never done a that's thing not true. wrong. That's actually, that's not true. That one's <laughs> true for He's sure. an assassin. Might be. <laughs> yeah, there's the quote. Might be an assassin. Uh, possibly. <laughs> um, yeah, Gerbil. Lovely little goblin. Lovely. 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 And I definitely don't play on the fact that I know that when we talk about pronunciation, Tommy like gets confused with pronunciation. I definitely don't play on that at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Tommy. <laughs> so, um, good morning, Heavenly. All right. Well, when we last left off, and don't mind the fact that I'm wrapped in a blanket, it's actually quite cold in my room and I didn't want to get up to get a sweater, so I just grabbed a blanket off my bed. Um, this is what, this is what Heavenly who just woke up is like. <laughs> <laughs> when we last left off last week, you had visited a tabaxi named Defiance who was in charge of the Hydra and monitoring the pass that you had come through. You were able to take a long rest with uh, your new friend who gave you a bunch of eggs, <laughs> a bunch of super hard boiled eggs. And you took off for the next city in Jadir, which is the southernmost city of Storia, which is where Defiance is from. And he had mentioned that King Bluebeard had begun his annual tour of the cities. And Mr. Blobby, you would know that Storia is the last city that the king visits. As you were uh, a day or so away, Defiance received a blink pigeon that had a wanted poster featuring your likeness and you were wanted for the crimes of treason, murder, and kidnapping a politician's son. <laughs> you know, just your normal everyday adventure stuff. <laughs> so, you are about half a day's ride outside of Storia. Is there anything in particular you would like to do on your journey before you get into what is the next city of civilization? You've been traveling through pretty standard fare, um, maybe past a couple of small villages, but nothing in particular. Jadir is mainly a place of very large cities with just landscape in between. So it's been a pretty lonely journey for the four of you plus Ned and baby. I'm gonna like give a tiny little seminar on how Judea, what Judea is like and how much better it is than everywhere else and why they shouldn't litter. Um, and you know, the basically the cities and you know, where we're going. I'm basically being a tour guide, a very judgmental tour guide. Okay, a judgmental tour guide. What does that yeah. look like? Are you like critiquing the land? It's basically like, so you'll notice that there's no, like, you know, piles of rubbish everywhere. The, the roads are quite well kept, and like some places I could mention, just like, <laughs> this is this is my country, look how better it is. Okay. But just generally kind of being like, and here we don't stab people in, in, in the imaginables, unless given reason. <laughs> Not yet. Not ever! <laughs> And then just carrying on, like, la 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 la. Okay. <laughs> Man, Oscar's head turns like <laughs> Mr. Bobby. He has his little outburst because that's, that's a little strange. <laughs> M M Mr. Blobby would be constantly talking as they like cross into Judea in a very kind of nervous talk away. Just like, oh yeah, I'm back. Okay, this is happening. Let's keep going. I'm not going to shut up. Just constant stream of consciousness. Okay. And the and the rest of you, do you want to do anything else as you as you walk? I want to talk to Mr. Blobby about okay. their obvious anxiety. Blobby. Yes? Why are you so nervous? I'm not nervous. I don't know what would give you that impression. I'm really happy to be back. I'm sure if we happen to go anywhere near the places I'm from, they'd absolutely love to see me. Have you seen these trees? They're really if, nice at this time of year. If you took breath, I would tell you to breathe. 
I yeah, I don't do that. Um, but it's really nice here. And um, this little town we're going to um, is, you know, it's very clean and nice. I haven't actually been there myself, but I know of it. <laughs> um, Blobby. Yes. You are nervous. You are spewing verbal diarrhea. I had someone explain to me what that word means, and I really hope I'm not. Mm. Well, the wall, words are falling out of you, like there's, there's said analogy. There's a lot analogy. to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. It's a very big country, and none of you have been here before that I know of. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot in it. Are you Lots happy to be here? here? I'm not unhappy to be here. Why I'm, did you leave? Uh, because I wanted to, I guess. Mm. Um, reasons. It was an adventure, I guess, sort of. Um, plus it didn't seem very many people wanted to, and that's weird. Or at least I was told it was weird. Now it seems weirder that I'm back. There was just more, and I wanted to see more. I can understand that. And, you know, also, um... It's very shiny and pretty here. Really, 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 really pretty. And like, you just see like all the gold coins and go to kind of rise a bit closer to the surface. Like, oh, I know. Yeah, it's so much prettier. Is there something going on here? <laughs> many, many things probably. They usually are. Now, if Gerbil thinks something is wrong, now you definitely know that something's wrong. Well, I never said anything was wrong. I just said things were going on. Things tend to be going on all the time. I'm just never really aware of them. Ah, so you can't tell us. I can't tell you something I don't know? No. Hmm. I was thinking, and uh, I was so much, she has a baby in her front swaddle. Perhaps we should give the Taruf a proper name. Us giving it code words is a bit suspicious. You don't like Boo Boo as a name? Not particularly. Fair enough. I don't really know anything about naming things. We don't really have them. How about Burble? Uh, or Lurble? I'm sensing a theme. Zerbal? <laughs> what about pink? It's very pink until it turns red. And that one time it kind of turned purple and that wasn't good. It didn't like that. Ned says, what about like Ned the third, you know? Give it you a want, lineage. You want this child to be yours? No. That's Who's usually the, how lineages work. Who's the second Ned? Me. Oh, who's the first Ned? My father? Oh. I thought his name had more in it. It definitely sounded like his name had more in it. Yeah, our name is, it's Unedar, but everyone just calls me Ned for short. So we could be calling you Oo <laughs> instead. I guess no one's ever done that. <laughs> So we could call you Ooh, Ned or something else. <laughs> How about Krios? Which is a good minor to a name. Krios? Krios. Oh, Krios, right. <laughs> For a second, I genuinely thought that Prius yeah, was a yeah, suggested yeah. minor tour name in the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we should go with Prius. I think Prius would be a great name. <laughs> we could go with Prius, I suppose. I've, I've, I have a question. Okay. Have we ever determined the the baby's like physical sex? 
at any point. One of Huey's physical specs, is that what you said? <laughs> but I, th- I no. think. Have, have, have we looked at the baby's. Um... <clears throat> well, I've just been prestidigitating whatever it's wearing. Whenever no. I need to, and Mr. No. Bobby wouldn't have any idea what that was anyway. Yeah, there has been there has been no baby baby uh, gender talk. We haven't had a we haven't had a reveal party because there weren't. There's been no reveal party. In, uh... It's a goth. It's a it's a goth. It's a goth. I feel like we need to address this. I think like all the onesies I got from that seller as well, it, I would have just got like a handful of each kind. So if any of them are vaguely gendered, it wouldn't have registered. Yeah, you just got a bunch of colors. Yeah. So. Yeah, M- Mr. Bobby has no idea. This is a foreign concept. Like he was given who, his pronouns okay. by a child. He has who no out idea of us? Yeah. So who yeah. out of us would would know gender? Like human, human sex. Yeah. I, mean, I guess I, maybe Gerbil. <laughs> I mean, we're getting into like the biology of humans yeah. now. Yeah. Who, and the, and also the biology of monsters, because yeah. obviously we would have to look at what it has <laughs> and then be able to relate to it. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. if this is a conversation I want to have. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say if you guys want to, if you want to take a peek, you know, I'll tell you. Um, and I just, I, uh, I don't know. I'm sure a second knows. Let's roll but... a dice for it. <laughs> yeah, let's roll a just, dice for yeah, it. Yeah, just roll a dice and let's say if it's a one, it's a boy. And if it's a two, it's a girl. Oh, okay. Flip a coin. And I, I have no coins on me because I don't have a coin. <laughs> uh, no. There we go. Okay. Okay. Roll, it's a, roll a dice. It's a, it's a boy. Okay. It's a boy. <laughs> Pete dust. Um, <laughs> you know Congratulations, you have a healthy baby boy. Still means nothing to Mr. Blobby. Yeah, I mean, As- Asuka is Asuka is aware of it, given that you know they, they, you know, they kind of like. They served in a household, right, of of creatures, of humanoid s creatures. So, like, they're aware of it. Yeah. But yeah, um, this is just making me want to like write a treatise on monster biology. <laughs> I would love to read that. I would love to read that. Um, there are so many questions. Yeah. As- Asuka, <laughs> particularly, Asuka thinks that uh, uh, Blobby and. Um, um, Aristomachi are have the baby under control. Asuka's just been adding rocks to Ned's backpack throughout the day. <laughs> do you tell him that you do this? No. <laughs> okay. So as as the day goes on, you, you know you you've been camping <laughs> at night, getting a uh, getting a. a you know, early start or whatever. And so as the sun comes up, you and Ned's like going along and you're sneaking rocks into his backpack. And as it's getting hotter and hotter, you can definitely tell that he's like starting to slump more. And he's kind of like arching his back as he's like trying to kind of get the backpack away from him. And he's like, oh, how much longer do we have to walk for? How much longer of the day would it would we could we assume we have to walk? Just a couple, like two hours. I don't know. Let's go right down. Only a little bit further, <laughs> which is the answer they've given every time that every Ned time. has yeah. asked. He doesn't look impressed with your answer. <laughs> and if you were to look on the sheet, you would just see that like seven hundred times because he's asked probably every seventeen minutes. I stopped rewriting it after a while. I just, I just, just showing the same one after a while. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're not too far away from the city now. Um, as you guys continue along and you're having this conversation about what to name the baby and you are tormenting Ned by putting rocks in his backpack. Um, 
<laughs> you begin to see the crest of this city. And uh, I think that Mr. Blobby, it, it's quite recognizable to you, the, the size of the city. All of Jadir's cities are really quite large. They don't really have tiny. So there are no podunk towns in Jadir, really, save from like some of the farming towns. Save you know. from my town. Save from Mr. Blobby's town. Uh, save from the towns that do some type of like l labor that's then exported to these larger cities. But for the most part, the face of Jadir is these large sprawling metropolises. And you're able to see it, even though you're still quite a ways away, you still have a bit of a walk ahead of you, you can definitely begin to see it. Okay, here we go, I guess. Are we are we sticking with the whole, you know, you're, you're here to just see the library thing? Are we doing that? Strange people. Well, I'd quite like to look at the library. Okay. And I'm just going to press the digitate all everyone multiple times. Just try and clean I'll it. Kind of, I'll sort of write down. Um, we should probably, it is perhaps best that we conduct our business quickly. But I would also like to see a blacksmith or an armor smith more properly. All right, here we go. Shopping episode. Yeah. This, this is less about shopping and more about self care. Mm. <laughs> self care episode. I missed, I missed, I missed, I brought it up. And, and just, just to clarify, because unfortunately um, my notes are in, in, it just has come in, have egg. Um, this is the town where Defiance, where I can, where I was told to find Defiance's sister. Familial. Sister, yes. that's it. Yep. Yep. I've just got drawings of eggs um, because I have my letter still stuck to Mr. Blobby's head. I love head your piece. little headpiece. I know, yep. I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> this is the fine. There's a letter on it. This is the fine. There's a letter. <laughs> so, yeah. Sister. Right, I'm writing that down. Are we having like a spa day and a bit of a relax then? Um. Well, so I'll say that there, there, um, there's probably a library here, but the library in question, like the great library of Jadir, would be in Fraga. It would be in the capital. Mm. But if you there, you could probably find a library here. So shopping and research and mail delivery. Mail Sounds delivery. like a relaxing day. I mean, just don't, you know kill anyone or damage anything or you know draw undue attention i'll be fine that'd be great yay <laughs> just starts blobbing off towards the city like this is gonna be fine so as you get closer to the city you were traveling on you guys weren't i assume like going through unmarked roads or were you were you trying to come from like a secret route or were you kind of traveling the routes that are pre-described we took the secret mountain path to be less obvious. I imagine we would continue to take the secret paths into the city to not okay. be obvious. Okay. So you were kind of traveling through just light forests and everything until you were able, I would say that Mr. Bobby, you would probably know and guide everyone uh, to the main path before you get within distance of the city, just because if people mm -hmm. were to like, like, come out of the forest and you're like, huh, 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 people would probably be like, um, what is going on? So before you actually get to the to the main entrance, you you go onto the main path, and it's not super well populated. This is a southernmost town, so people aren't really coming from the direction that you were coming. Although there is a road, and Mr. Blobby, you know that there. They're pretty, there's good infrastructure all throughout Jadir, kind of no matter where it is. So you're traveling on this road and, and there's really no one else with you and you see this entrance. There's no gate around the city or wall, but there is, you know, two large pillars, kind of an arch that, in, that indicate that you are entering the city and it's just ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
I'm kind of doing that, you know, that awkward thing of like, you know, blobbing ahead and then we'll stop. Not so much turning around because the lack of features, but just waiting until everyone's caught up again and then blobbing on. Kind of like, ah. anytime I get too far ahead, just kind of like, oh no. Don't want to be the first one in. I would like to. Uh... No, 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 no. Okay. As- okay. Asuka will mention that uh, we should make sure that we continue to use our gnome de pleurs. <laughs> uh, oh, now I have to remember what they were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we got oh, Ricky Maru. Ricky Maru. Yeah. Ricky Maru. And uh, Persephone. Rick, Ricky Maru, uh, Grimble. Oh, hey, I'll get the uh, disguise back on. And Ed, and I just don't have a name anymore. <laughs> what was? Oh yeah, Ed. Uh, and and now the baby is Krios. Or Prius. No one objected, so we're gonna go with yeah. <laughs> Wait, is who is Ricky Maru again? Is that Gerbil? Gerbil, yeah. Gerbil. And basically, Asuka is Grimble. Yeah, basically, yeah. Arisa actually just kind of like took their kind of names and flipped them and then gave them different ones. But that, that's where her brain yeah. went. Okay. Just, yeah, that's not obvious. Yep, so Ricky Maru, Grimble, Persephone, Ed, and Gesture. <laughs> Just am like, I st- am I still going for the businessman route? <laughs> I think that's I think that's whatever you want. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> just, and then Azka will sort of look at Ned and write down, I guess. Remember, you are Ed. <laughs> I mean, it would have been great if I had like a cooler code name, but yeah, whatever. I can be Ed. You want to pick a different one? I mean, I don't really think it. Like, so long as you you get one before we're in there. I do want to pick a different one. Thank you. I would like to be called, and he scrunches up his little face. Um, and he says, I'm going to pick something really stupid. Um, he says he wants his name to be. It's going to be something like Black Razor. Something really like Goth and Emo. XX Nightwing 420. (laughs) Hacker with a four. (laughs) I think think it'd be hard pressed to come up with a more goth name than Persephone. Sorry, Persephone. I mean, come on. It's like Queen of the Undead. Super His wow, name now, is now going I don't want to be... Awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> get, get Arisa to do some charcoal and you can have your wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Here we go. He goes, he goes, okay. Um, I would like my spy name to be, my spy name, my secret <laughs> name to be Bernardo. Bernardo. Oh my God. Well, at least it's not Raven Blackbird McKnight or something. Yeah. You know. What? Those are super cool. I want to be Blackbird McKnight now. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Asuka puts a hand on Ned's shoulder and just shakes their head. <laughs> just just the slow, the slow no. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, Bernardo. fine. Bernardo, Bernardo it is. Okay, so Bernie then. No. Bernardo. Bernie. Bernie's a good name. No, my name is Bernardo. <laughs> <laughs> and as you all are having this conversation, <laughs> you, walk like through, Sorry, go ahead. you walk through the pillars into this, this, this city and it's, I don't know, like standard fantasy city. You know, there's a woman and she's wearing like a dress and she's like, do you want some eggs? I've got fresh eggs. And then you keep walking and there's someone who's like, there must be more than this. (laughs) (laughs) And then you keep walking and there's like a tavern. And even though it's only like, you know, we're going to get sued. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's not seconds. longer than seven seconds. seconds. I thought it was thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> in, the UK, in the UK, it's thirty. Yeah, yeah. No, US we recently US. checked it out. 
US is seven, I think. Yeah, yeah. Scrap, where, where does where, where does it fall? Disney I don't know. Because Disney I'm, sues everyone. I'm streaming from the UK. I'm based in the UK. Yeah, you're not? covered by EU law then. Oh, Just like, nice. For now. For now. For now. No. This has been your copyright PSA, everyone. <laughs> Hi, welcome to How the close to the line can you tow it? <laughs> oh my goodness. There's a tavern that has, you know, a couple of people like drinking on a patio. There's a beautiful patio set up um, with some like torches to keep it warm. And it just looks, it looks like a postcard city. <laughs> Listening to the big unfair if I hear no what <laughs> move on, move on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and as you're walking through, um let's just everyone give me a perception check. Oh just for fun. I'm yeah. having to use a digital roller today. All my dice are packed up because I need to reorganize them. Perception. <sighs> Roll. I'm perception. feeling especially perceptive today. Wow, everyone's the same. 20. <laughs> what, 20? Like, not 90, not 30. 30, yeah. Okay, wow, damn. Everyone got very high. I think we're a so, little on the edge. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mr. Blobby is, like, teetering. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> so as you make your way through this city, you see that the... They're like street numbers and street names, but they're all very oddly designed. They're meant to be non-intrusive. So instead of there being like poles with, you know, boards on them that say where you're going, there are these wooden pillars that come out of the ground that everything is like hand etched in, like wood carving style. So while it looks very nice, it's a little difficult to actually see where you are or where you're going, but you are able to see a nice dainty little sign that has some tourist information and it tells you that there's an inn just a few minutes away however many miles that would be in fantasy land and there you know and it basically is a little kind of like direction board and so there are a couple of inns to choose from um and you guys could just go in in whatever direction you want do we want to get rooms like you know to stay in and and or it do does say on the board where the library is as well. Or, and like the we, town hall and everything. Or do we want to do everything we can as quickly as possible and then get out of Dodge? Yes, I do not think we should stay long. I don't know if we should take rooms. Rooms means being stationary. Stationary means you get caught. I mean, we have to be stationary at some point. You sleep. I've got lots of stationary, thank you. I don't need any more. Uh, but... W- I'd like to spend a fair amount of time in the library, you know. Uh, there might be books I've not seen before. Mm. I don't think you can sleep there, though. I think that would count as littering. They're very, very harsh on that. That wouldn't be good. Maybe we could get a room in the evening, just in case. Good idea, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Gerbil, may I have those candlestick tops. Uh, yes! I, I made so much for you! <laughs> so sweet. But Arisa actually will do one thing. She will take the diamond earrings off the candle tops. Okay. And give them to Ned. I do believe oh. these belong to you. Oh. Um, okay, so did you guys just, like, ransack my house? <laughs> we I didn't. didn't ransack anything. That involves much more effort. I don't understand how what I'm supposed to think if you hand me diamond earrings and tell me that they belong to me. I've never seen these in my life. I cleaned all your carpet. Uh, what? I, I didn't your carpet. ransack your house. I was told to make myself feel at home, so I did. It is what Gobble does when he is at home. Mm-hmm. But that is why I'm giving them back to you, because we are not thieves. Asuka, he, he looks at you and he says, how come you're putting all of this effort into training me the ways of the noble warrior and just th- just this has happened? And he like motions to Gerbil. 
who's like scratching their armpit or something. <laughs> Oscar writes down, I have little to no control over what Gerbil does. <laughs> <laughs> so fair, how come to be in this party aren't for people goes and train you bring rocks in my backpack and make me get up forever early and I haven't eaten a full meal in like two days. I'm so hungry. And you keep hitting me with sticks and everything. I hate this. Isn't there like a, a, a cart, like someone selling like a food store? Yeah, like definitely. Selling... Okay. I I because he's moaning, I just want to go up to the nearest one mm-hmm. and buy something. Okay. Something that smells delicious. Okay. You go up, uh, there, there's a, you're kind of right next to a building that has its windows open and there's a, a woman there and she is selling hot, hot pies, hand pies, hot hand pies. Hand hot pies. Pie it's pasties. Hand pie pasties. Hand pie pasties. Hot. pasties. Mm. Hot pie hand? Um, sorry. Okay, I go, I go up to the window and I, I just peruse. And I'll wait to be served. Okay. She she watches you come up and she goes, oh, hello. Welcome to Mary McDonald's. Um, this is uh, uh, my shop of baked goods. <laughs> um, I am known for my, for my apple pies, but what are you in the mood for? You are known for them, your apple pie? Nick pies, you know, because it's like a play on my name. Because oh my goodness, yeah, oh, this isn't gonna, gonna, gonna get a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will have five hot apple black pies. <laughs> Great! Oh my gosh, that's so good. Um, I love that. I love that for you. That will be <laughs> one silver. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing it's supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Is this a continental thing? Are the people in that restaurant we're not going to name like nice in your country? Because over here it sound more like Ned selling your fire. Yeah, 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 that's the rules. Yeah, so yeah. In in this place, whenever you buy something, they go, "I I love that for you." Ah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of they're affirming they're affirming your purchase. Like I love that you did that. I love but, that for you. But with their tone of voice, I can't tell if that's supposed to be a compliment or sarcastic. <laughs> Yeah, as a Brit, I'm very uncomfortable. I know, <laughs> said that to me in a fast food restaurant of no name. I think I'd just back away like, you watch me? What have you done to it? <laughs> I, said, like, I need an adult. What are you talking about? <laughs> so she's standing at like the open window and you can see behind her shelves that have like bread. Is this a drive-by? Can... Are we doing a drive-by? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <goodness. laughs> Just walk three feet to my next window. I'll just yeah, yeah, and she goes, "That's so great." I'm just gonna throw these in the in the deep fryer, and I'll have them out for you in just a moment. Uh, and they're not already cooked. No, they're not cooked because Mary McDonald's does everything fresh. It's supposed to be fast. It's not. This is not fast food. This is Mary McDonald's delicious window hut. Oh god. <laughs> Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> so she she disappears behind the window and she grabs some like little pre-rolled uh you know, they're like shaped you know, they're like this big and they're shaped and they have like little fingerprint. Uh, Are they going to like burn my mouth because they're molten? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. She drops them okay. in a she drops them in a vat of hot oil and after just a few minutes she fishes them out and wraps them in some some beautiful brown paper. Um, that has a it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful crimson color and she has written her name <laughs> in gold calligraphy um, on, she, she hands them over to you uh, let, uh, specific letters in her name really really weirdly large well i mean her name is mary mcdonald so definitely yeah, there's yeah. there's just one yeah. big m that represents it's kind of but you know yeah it's her monogram so it's an yeah. m yes <laughs> It. Like golden arches by any chance. Maybe golden well, arches. She has a beautiful oh. script, you know. No, so I, think very... that, I think golden arches is also copyrighted by uh, what's that movie? Uh, was it Coming to America? Yeah, McDowell's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is that copyrighted there as well? God damn. That's probably also yeah. copyrighted. God damn it. Oh, I love that movie. It's got, actually, she does it so her M kind of looks like a bit like a heart. It's really cute. Oh. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> There are um, the golden overhangs. Gerbil really likes that. 
So I don't have any change. I just give her a gold piece. Okay. She gives you change, which I get, I don't know. Is that like 49 silver or something? What is the currency? 10 silver to a gold. So she gives you nine silver. It's like, it's like pennies, 10 peas and pounds, isn't it? Okay. I'm just adding silver. Now I have silver. Uh, Multiples of 10, unless it's electrum. (laughs) Who yeah. <laughs> uses Electrum though? <laughs> Seriously. I have to fuck with my play. <laughs> Remind me not That's to play fair. for you. That's valid. <laughs> okay. Don't cool. give her ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I now I now head back over to the med and I rummage around in the bag. And I just pick out one, I put it in Mr. Blobby. And then give one to Ned. I, I just dissolve it, paper and all. It's like, oh, that's nice. That's very hot. Wow. Ow. That's <laughs> nice, though. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going Ned to go. takes a bite, and it, as he's thanking you, he's thanking you with his mouth full, and he's just like, oh, thank you. Oh, so, and there's just like bits of apple and, and crumbs all over his oh, little mouth. Oh, okay. Oh, close your mouth hole. That's not nice. <clears throat> oh, and we so much actually bought five because she kind of forgot that. <laughs> That's a good eight. I was about to say. I was yeah. no, and, no. And, now, and now she's looking in the bag and then she's looking at you and then she's looking in the bag and then she gives an extra one to Ned and then takes one for herself. Did you give one to Gerbil? Yeah, I gave one to Gerbil. Okay, yeah. Ned eats both of them. And he, he kind of looks at you, Asuka, guiltily, but then he eats both of them. Does he get any neater with the eating after the horrified exclamation? No. Uh, no. There's like yeah. this apple like dripping down his hand, and he's just going hog wild. Is he? Oh, is man. he? Has, has he gotten in a better mood? Yes. Okay, good. You Asuka, can see his mood. Has Asuka goes goes into Ned goes to Ned and opens up Ned's backpack, starts taking out the rocks and dropping them on the ground. <laughs> He's like, what? Oh, how many? How many rocks? Oh my gosh! Oh, oh That's so many. Yeah. Where did you even get all those rocks from? <laughs> If you needed rocks, I could have picked them up as I was going over them. I mean, we don't need you know. rock. Uh, well, why did you pack them then? That seems a little silly. I didn't pack them. Ugh. I really like this logo. Do you like? I like the way the M looks like a target. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. 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 I want to yeah. send that. I, and I want to watch our delayed reactions. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm like... <laughs> when the, you can see when the penny drops. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, that was good. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. I can't yeah. breathe. I can't oh. it's over. Female. So yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm literally Ooh. dead. <laughs> Crat, you killed me. I'm sorry. Hom- this homicide of some degree. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> what were we doing? Oh. <laughs> I love that. I love that for you. <laughs> I, think, I think we were deciding on our plan. <laughs> oh boy. Um... Asuka will quickly write to Ned. Um, <clears throat> you made it all this way without realizing how... <clears throat> Sorry. My voice is just all over the place today. <laughs> <It's> just... <clears throat> I'm trying not to laugh. Uh, um, do you see how far you made it when you didn't realize... 
the weight you carry on your back. You are stronger than you know, Ned. <sighs> but I only kept going because I knew that if I stopped, you guys would probably just let me die. Exactly. <laughs> Lesson number three in life. <laughs> that is not very inspiring. I wouldn't have let you die of starvation, Ned. If you really wanted to die, I would have stabbed you. I don't want to die. Exactly. Look how far that motivation brought you. <laughs> All right, well... <sighs> Also, also, I can't be here for a reason, right? It's because you need my help in the library or something. I guess none of you can read. Oh, whoa, 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 Yagina. I am clearly writing to you. <laughs> I can I, clearly read. I can listen. Yeah, but I mean, if you read everything and then you had to write it out, that would be a lot. So I kind of just assumed. Uh, you mean of the reading of the scholarly nature? I just assumed that you were all illiterate. What? <clears throat> Got it. Just like blobs up to Aristomache and kind of like grows a little taller and thinner. Like, what does illiterate mean? It means you're stupid and uneducated. No, okay, yeah, that I'm is illiterate. not what I said. Yeah. You know, you guys have street smarts, which I totally respect. Yeah, I just figured that the reason illiterate. you asked me to come was because you needed me to read for you. I don't, is that, a, is that a wild thing for me to assume? I honestly don't understand why else you would bring me. I'm like 16 years old. We bought I you because you're it... an expert on humans. And also because if we left you there, you probably would have told people about it. Like we I'm told died. you that. Like we had a whole conversation about how we were gonna bring you so that you didn't, you know, tell people the thing that we're trying not to tell people. Like you were there for that. Yeah. I mean, I may be illiterate, but I remember things. <laughs> As you all are having this conversation and Ned is like, I'm only 16, and you're all like, we brought you here for a reason. People are definitely looking at you. They're not like staring. No one's concerned. But, you know, people are kind of like turning their heads at this very Asuka. strange conversation. Well, right, Dan, perhaps we should move this conversation elsewhere. Do yes, you let's... We'll talk about it later, Bernie. Let's go. Okay. Where do you guys want to go? <clears throat> I literally just like blob over to Asuka and wait for them to move. Yeah, if if Asuka is going to the blacksmith, I would like to go too. Yes. Yeah, I think Asuka okay. would like to find the blacksmith. Um, they wouldn't recommend splitting up, but would understand if there were those who wanted to go to the library now okay oh no. on the sign that kind of told you like where some inns were and some restaurants uh there was also one that said kind of like the shopping district and you would reasonably assume that that would be where you would go so you you head there and as you get into this district there are less and less houses there really aren't any houses in the city everything you know is kind of like built up uh, like fantasy apartment complexes. And as you get into the shopping district, those turn into larger buildings. And at some point you kind of walk through and you see that there are these thatch roofs that are built overhead and you walk into an outdoor market that has been protected from the elements with these thatch roofs that are overhead that allow a little bit of light in. There's still plenty of natural light, but you could tell would provide a good amount of protection if there were like rain. And in this market, this is definitely where there are a lot more people. So it's much more bustling. There are people shopping. You can see uh, a, a gang of youths and they are, they're, they're throwing apples in the air and laughing, you know, as youths do. And there are shops. There's some like, there's like a, a fruit vendor and someone selling jewelry. And if you were to keep walking, you would see a blacksmith as well. Are the, are the youths wearing fantasy hoodies? Uh, they're wearing, <laughs> they're all wearing matching track suits that have yep, yep. <clears throat> and vans. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Okay. Asuka will look around to see if there's a blacksmith or an armor smith around. Yeah, you you can find the blacksmith. You see the anvil, you know, the 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 universal sign for blacksmith. And there is an orc uh working on the anvil. It's a it's a it's a male orc and he has one big arm. Like it, one of his arms, they both of his arms are big, but one of his arms is way larger than the other and he's just hammering away at inappropriate a sword. joke incoming is it his right arm? <laughs> I'll tell you that it's his dominant arm. Where? <laughs> <laughs> so I can help myself. <laughs> and this is also like an open, mar- you know, everything, there are no, there are no closed shops. So everything is kind of open facing. So as you approach him, there are walls that were kind of built to give a little bit of privacy, but there's no storefront. So you can see his, his, what is it called? The fire pit, the big fire monster. The forge. The forge. forge. Yep. Yes. <laughs> The hot, hot hot fire pit. <laughs> the, 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 it is. It is. This, that's actually the name of the store. It's the orc's name's fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> hot, the hot orc's fire name pit. is actually Snat. <laughs> but yes, hot, hot, hot fire pit. <laughs> Snat's hot fire pit. Sounds like it should excuse be a bar. Me, excuse me, Mr. Pit. <clears throat> what, and you can see he pit. has. I think that's a very has weird a, bar. He has a, a mannequin that has like some armor displayed. But for the most part, he doesn't really look up as you walk. I don't know if you want to walk in or if you're just stopping in front of you. He kind of lifts his eyes uh, and you I'll know motions that he's paying attention, but he continues <laughs> to hammer. There is so much you would join as well. Mr. Blobby is just standing behind them, just like looking through like legs. He doesn't have eyes, but you get the impression that he's like, you know, peering around. And as as you say something, he kind of grunts. <clears throat> you looking at us? You looking at us? Oh, good. The, Mr. the Mr. Kind of poke someone in the back of the leg, just like. <laughs> oh, I think Heavenly actually froze. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, it does she seem really, right. She doesn't. Re- she wasn't really still. I was just like, hang on a second. She <laughs> did say that she was cold. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, uh, she's frozen. Oh. Mm. Mm. You're full of the puns today. Oh, Oh, she gone. She gone. Oh, no. Hopefully, she's just restarting Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, her internet went out. out. No. Maybe time for a quick break? Yeah. That sounds perfect. Let's uh, take a... Let's take a quick... We'll take uh, five, ten minutes, everyone. Okay, chat. Uh, oh, oh, okay. My, 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 my chat screen's gone really weird. Um, if you're in chat, uh, take this opportunity. Go and get yourself a bio. Go and take yourself. Uh, give yourself some stretches. Um, uh, grab yourself a fresh drink. And uh, if you are at work, as I know some of you are, uh, maybe take a quick walk around the office. Go and say hi to Pamela, whoever Pamela is. Um, we'll see you in about five, ten minutes. Bye.
we're back. Thanks for uh, bearing with us, everyone. I hope you had a good break. Um, let us know how your conversation with uh, your representative Pamela was. Um, and um, yeah, let's. Uh, what were we doing? We were wandering around the market, not talking about fish. You guys there? Hello? Yeah. You can't hear me. Why can't you hear me? What? Chat can hear me. I can actually hear you through the Twitch. But I can't hear you through this. Uh, what's this called? Test, test. Zoom. Test, test. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, hey. oh, hi. There we go. Hi. There you are. So now, yeah, everyone can Everyone can hear you. Yeah. That was. Uh, this is weird. Okay. I don't know why this has happened. Okay. Okay. We can hear you now. Can you hear yeah. us? You are here. We're, we're live. Yeah. Having. Yeah. We're live. Yeah, we're, we're live. I like did the full intro and everything, and I was like, oh yeah, we, and we weren't talking about this, like, and yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're back. We've been about like a minute and a half now. <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah. Um. Chat has just seen us all looking very confused. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, was, I was like, am I? Does is he gonna say something? Is he gonna indicate that we're? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, I yeah, just play it like music, and I was like, why does it look like Scrat is talking? There are some serious <laughs> technical gremlins going There's on today. Something strange going on. Something strange. Uh, anyway, we were in the marketplace looking for a blacksmith, okay. not talking so, about fish. No, no, there are no. There is a fish monger. If that's something we want to explore later, is that, is that no. something related to the conversation we had? Because I don't think I want to explore that. Could be, yeah. could be. This oh, is yeah. a fantasy land. Um, this is an all monster land. I mean, it's entirely possible. So the the blacksmith is hammering away at his <clears throat> sword that he's working on, and as you what? approach, he looks up at you and gives a a grunt, a cursory grunt as introduction, but doesn't say anything. I don't speak Sweet. that language. Just looking up at Asuka and Roger, <laughs> like, I don't speak that. Smith, <laughs> we were trying your services. You are not powerful enough for my services. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a mood. You're in a mood today. <laughs> we have I'm today. so sorry. I am so sorry. Uh, as as you say, we require you services. He goes, huh? Well, you've come to the right place. Oh, okay, I understand that. Mm. I require my horns to be tipped, and she points to the 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 the, the, the tips of missing tip of her horns. And my friend here could do with some body work. He looks to Gerbil um, and furrows his brow. <laughs> oh, oh, um, yes. Hello, Ricky Maru. Um, nice to meet you. I don't you. do body work. Do you need uh, armor? Oh, no, not for me, for, uh, for Asuka. Gerbil! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's Asuka's name? <laughs> It's very close to your but own. But I also name. like that when you were correcting him, you screamed out Gerbil. No, I, I screamed Grimbal. <laughs> Grimbal, sorry, Grimbal. <laughs> Asuka's an old friend, reminds reminds me of. Anyway. Oh yeah, sorry, Ricky Maru. Yeah, Ricky Maru here. It's Asuka that needs the uh, body. Uh, not Asuka, the other one, Grimble. Grimble that needs the <laughs> What is your problem? Why can you not remember his name? Are you drunk? Uh, I think I am. I better leave. <laughs> Miss, Mr. Blobby just a pseudopod just like flings out like one of those, you know, the 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 gooey like stretchy hands that you throw at walls just flings out and covers Gertrude's face. <laughs> Yeah, Asuka, not his will, mouth, his Asuka will go up to the smith and and take out their pad and um I require a little patchwork on my <laughs> <Bob> <laughs> <Patterson>? <laughs> 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 
Awesome. Like, because like Asuka had the the last Asuka in in um in uh uh bu- 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 talent Talonford right Mazir um had like a blacksmith that they had regularly gone to right. It still took a few times to like really clarify what Asuka needed. Um, but like, so now like Asuka's like, okay, I need this. I, I need to. <clears throat> the armor is my body. I require work on my body. <laughs> and we'll point out sort of like the bite marks and like the scratches and some of the cracks on it. Okay. Doesn't need he... to be perfect. Just needs to hold together. Uh, okay. He looks at you. And so first he'll turn to Aristomachi because she had said that she needed her horns tipped. And he'll nod and say, yeah, I, uh, I can do that. And he kind of steps closer to you. And he's, he's almost as tall as you. He's a, he's a big man. But as he steps closer, he kind of holds out his hands in, in question about whether or not he can approach you any closer. <clears throat> <laughs> and... She will bow her head and, and she will be careful to cover the our fake baby costume to hide the fact that that's probably where the tips of her horns went and okay. just kind of like present them. Okay. To inspect. So, yeah, he steps closer and he, he'll kind of like tap, touch the end of your horns and then kind of like do like a rough measure with his big old fingers that are like the size of hot dogs. And like big hot dogs though. And he will kind of like mumble, he'll mumble like, oh, I guess I could, if I used that mold, I could. And then, uh, how do you want me to attach them? Do you want them to be flush with the bone or do you want more of like a cap? I I was thinking a cap, perhaps you can drill it into the rest of the material. Okay. All right. And uh, how much uh, of an ex- how much extension do you want there? Just make them pointy. All I right. use them often. Okay. All right. So it needs to be strong enough to withstand battle. Indeed. Okay. And what are we thinking? Just silver? <clears throat> Arisa Machi has the Chandelier bits? What color are they? It's a it was a gold candelabra. Okay, yeah. She was a she'll offer these and show them. And she's saying, perhaps you can use these for material. Well, yeah, I mean this is uh he kind of looks at it they're just broken bits that mm. Gerville had. He looks at them and he says, Yeah, I mean I can definitely melt these down, but I might want to mix them with something. These aren't going to hold up for a very long time. I don't think they were made for goring. Mm, well, you are the professional. Okay. And then he turns to you, Asuka, and he kind of, he crosses his arms and he walks around you. And as he walks around you, he looks you up and down and he kind of rubs a thumb along one of his tusks that's extended out from his lower lip. And he says, huh, so... Do I remove the parts of you that need to be worked on, or am I working on them as they're attached to you? God, what would Asuka even look like without the armor? (laughs) It'd be so weird, but no. Um, Can he be dismantled? Because I've just thought of a a whole new stealth tactic. We just put him in a bag. (laughs) No, I mean, I like to think that it's always sort of been just Asuka being worked on as, as a whole, um, can't really be taken apart and just sort of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like having, like, it's kind of like having stitches done, but not giving any, given any sort of like pain medication. <laughs> so. <laughs> Does it hurt? Do you feel it? Yeah, it can. I wish so much will probably ask this yeah. once you're in the chat. The chat. <laughs> um, it, 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 yeah, it's not like a, physical hurt but like Asuka still feels it in sort of their very being right like right um it's almost like it's not quite like psychic like you know it's right it's like um 
because it, it, okay. the, 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 the the armor is Asuka. So like that that's something that that they will feel is when changes are sort of made to what they are, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> he, uh, he he'll take a step closer to you and he'll kind of tap you on the chest and he'll say. Uh, if I'm going to work on you, I'm going to need a bit of resistance. Um, can you push back against my hand? And he's basically just trying to gauge how strong you are, because if he's going to try and work on you, he doesn't want you like falling back, you know? So he's trying to gauge how sturdy you are. Can can I help? Can I help by like being a brace behind him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to do that, yeah. he also. I mean, he'll probably put a sook on a, a, a on a chair. Okay, so he he looks between the two of you and he says, "Okay, well, what, what what do you want first? Do you want the horns first, or do you want the <laughs> polishing?" <laughs> uh, do my friend first. <laughs> Uh, look, you made me forget to turn my modulator on because you're just doing crazy bed oh, love and broomsticks stuff. Cracking, <laughs> cracking themselves over there. Yeah, they are, totally. Um, <clears throat> uh, work on my friend first, it is more important. And um, like, and there's there's like obvious signs of the armor having been patched before, right? Like, okay. um, I don't know if anyone is sort of familiar with the concept of uh, Kintsugi. Which oh, is, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which is um, sort of mending broken things by filling the cracks with like typically gold or silver or some sort of valuable metal. Except for Asuka, it's not really gold or valuable metals. It's just other types of metal sort of filling in right. the cracks and whatnot. Okay. Um, so he will go to he'll he'll get some equipment like a a a file and a hammer and a cloth. You know, and some oil, and he'll pu- he'll put up pull up a chair, and indicate for you to sit down, and then he will begin to to work on you, and he'll kind of as he's getting into especially like the bites, and he's trying to kind of ding them out, but he can't get behind you like the way you would usually a dent. You know, he's trying some new stuff. There's a bit of resistance. You know, he'll kind of like pull you and push you around, and you're you're kind of wobbling like this. Yeah. But um, I'd say it. I mean, you've taken quite a bit of damage. You were attacked by a hydra, so yeah, yeah. Now uh, I went down to well below half health. It's not. It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect, and that's yeah. something Asuka has sort of come to accept is that these repairs will never be, you know, will never bring them back to what they used to be. Um, okay. But um, they'll just. And hold what is the state of the like? Is your armor painted or like this? The sparrow symbol is that painted on? Yeah. Or? So the, the sparrow. So yeah. So parts of most of the armor has been painted. So like, okay. there's definitely like places where the paint has chipped. Um, okay. The sparrow symbol is perhaps the f- freshest paint. Like the is probably because that's one thing that Asuka always makes sure to get retouched up and whatnot. Um, is making sure that that symbol because it's like. It's very important to them. Do, do um, you repaint it yourself? Um, no, usually has someone do that. It's a little, it's a little difficult okay. trying to paint. <laughs> and what's the state um, of the, the sparrow now? How long has it been since you got it touched up? Um, I mean, how long have we been gone since? I mean, you've been traveling for a while. Like mm. a couple of weeks now. So yeah. maybe like a month or so since. Okay. So uh, as, we been as doing much that. maybe a couple months. Okay, as he is touching you up and Woo! buffing you and p- just pampering you, you know, giving you what you deserve. He's being he's getting in between your toenails and everything, and he's rubbing your shoulders, and <laughs> he <clears throat> runs a thumb over your sparrow, and then he kind of looks at other parts of your paint that are chipping and he says and uh are you gonna want these touched up as well if uh Asuka will write down if you can offer that well uh, um i can't i'm not an artist but uh i think 
I think I know someone who might be able to help. And he, he kind of leans closer and he runs his finger over the sparrow again and kind of gauges the color and the detail. And he goes, yeah, I think, I think I know someone who's talented enough to do that if you're willing to let a stranger work on you some more. Uh, I was going to look. Um, I'm very satisfied with your service so far. So if you have any recommendations, I will gladly take it. Okay. Yeah. So he finishes up, I'd say over all, he's able to do it pretty quickly since, you know, he's not taking anything off and he's not trying to restore it to a pristine state. He's just trying to clean it up and he's getting all you all shiny. I'll say maybe like two hours. And at that point, he'll turn to Aristomachi, but for the other two, for Gerbil and Mr. Blobby, and uh, do you two, and I'll say that Ned is probably just watching this whole thing um, in awe. I don't think he's gonna go anywhere because you you are essentially training him. So this is a chance for him to kind of get to see how you work and how you're put together. And he's a little shocked. And he's also a bit, he considers himself to be a bit of a scholar. So he's very interested in, in what's happening. But Mr. Blobby and Gerbil, do you two want to do anything while this is happening? Or you all just want to hang out? I'm pretty much sticking with Aristomache and Asuka in, in that kind of, you know, nervous child at fun fair for the first time way. I am staying very close to whoever's legs I can hide behind, even though I'm the size of a sofa. <laughs> so like getting, like, yeah. getting underfoot. <laughs> you just like, you suddenly, like you've been standing still for a while and you suddenly feel this slight warmth as like a blob leans against the backs of your legs. Just like, ah. You know, like when a big dog just leans against you. Yeah. And Gerbil, like, do you want to do anything? Uh, I, I think Gerbil's kind of fascinated. We've established that they are a bit of a, um... A schooler? Yeah, so we, they're, they're, they're just sort of looking and taking notes and thinking, oh, really, you can't remove them from the silk. Doesn't that mean the silk will burn? You know, that sort of... Hmm, uh... okay. Special silk. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm totally, like, <laughs> uh, like, I'm engineer geeking out over this, and how would I... Like harden metal on a suit of armor know. whilst I assembled. Know what this powering and... a few hours would be. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah. One day, maybe one day we'll cover it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We're just gonna say for now. Magic, magic, <laughs> fantasy, magic. blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> so as he finishes, he turns to you, Aristomachi, and, and he says, "Well, you don't have to hang out for this next part. I think I could probably get them done. You know, for you by." tomorrow morning it's a little late but i can set the the mold tonight and they'll cool and aristomachi has been has actually spent the last two if it's your first time i get that aristomachi has uh <laughs> spent the last two hours um there's a very pensive look on her face mm. as she's been watching the work be done on asuka and it's like the, it's the first time she's actually seen all the damage on him, and he seemed very upset by this, and a bit distracted. Yeah. Nausicaa just sort of takes the whole session in stride, you know? They're, they they are very stoic during the whole thing. Um, it's kind of their thing. <laughs> to be fair, um, if they were in pain, could they even scream? I know, that's the worst thing. So we're just, everyone's just imagining silent screaming. <laughs> It's it's not it's not like it's not like I wouldn't say it's it uh, this currently is not like you know if you were to have say have surgery without any sort of ana anesthesia um, but uh, you know it's like getting a lot of very deep stitches being done. <laughs> I've had um, stitches done without anesthesia and I was screaming. So this is this is yeah. where my brain is at. I've and I don't think that, it's not great. <laughs> not fun, not fun. I <laughs> think fun. As, as kind of gentle as he's trying to be, you know, this is a monster world where lots of monsters are super common. I don't think helmed horrors are super, super common or ones that look like you. So I don't know that he, he's definitely not checking in with you. I don't think it would be something that he would think he needs to check in about. To you at this point, as soon as you sat down and he put his hands to you, you became just a suit of armor. And so he's not really thinking 
is this, is this someone that I should check in with? And so, you know, he, he, he's being a little rough. He's doing his job. He's not like trying to hurt you, but he's definitely not being gentle the way that you would with like, if, if he were putting stitches in Gerbil or Aristomachi where he would be thinking like, is this something I need to check in about? He's just kind of like, going away and, you know and this is what yeah and this is what arista matches in yeah. because she knows that asuka is not a good suit of armor and the fact that he's not checking it and the fact he's not like reacting either and you just if firming it out if uh asuka is being you know stoicing through the pain can i roll a perception check to see if i notice like you know if he's shaking or any kind of reaction to it mm. yeah Cause, yeah, go ahead cause and make a perception check, and then Tommy, I'll let you gauge the check. Because Mr. Bobby has no idea how, you know, people work. Right. Okay. Fifteen. I mean, I think that that Asuka shows most most of their emotion through like hand gestures, head tilts, head gestures, right? Um, but you know, there is. Um, they do have the the sort of glowing eyes that sit behind the mask of their of their helm, um, and I think you may notice that those sort of grow sort of thinner, uh, you know, sort of like in a, almost like a kind of a not exactly a squint, but you know when someone sort of like grimaces in pain and kind of like you know tightens their their face, but okay. it's not. M- Mr. Blobby is gonna, you know schlep over and just like whatever side um mr blacksmith whose name i've already forgotten isn't working on mr blobby's just gonna like encase your hand in goo because he can't really hold hand so he's just gonna, <laughs> just, I'm gonna like... say, just just to add you know to, to this scene ned notices what's happening and as soon as mr blobby puts his goo around you ned is also gonna take your hand Wait, wait, wait. The same hand? Yeah. Okay, so Ned's hand is also in case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's going to stick his hands right in there. It's literally like one of those YouTube videos where you know where you like the sim videos where you the watch sim people video. push their hands into slime. It's yeah. like that. So as as he's doing this and he finishes up, he, he tells you Aristomachi that you know it, it'll something that'll take a couple of hours and he'll he'll do it tonight but you know he's like i'm i'm gonna close shop soon but and he turns back to you uh asuka and he says uh my daughter is the one who i think could help you with your paint there you're more than welcome to come back home with me for dinner and uh let her have a look at you she's pretty talented i think she would enjoy an opportunity to work on something a little more dynamic um, yeah, and I think so during the sort of hand holding, I think Asuka's hand is, is limp for a little while, but then there's just the, a little Ned's, squeeze. And Ned's crying. There's, there's, <laughs> there's a little <laughs> squeeze, um, when Asuka sort of notices them. Um, Asuka will, um, look at the rest of the group. And uh what what time of day is it at this point? Like is it getting late? Yeah, so you it had taken you most of your travel day to get here and you haven't really been here for that long. So it's early evening. It's not gonna be super late. Okay. Oscar will look at Mr. Blobby and sort of write down, is the library still open? Uh, would I know if the library's still open? I would you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. There's not. There aren't universal library hours. Um, I don't know, but it is getting uh, a little late. Um, and if this is important, we should probably take care of it rather, you know, rather than hang on. And it seems important. <laughs> and there's a not really so much a squeezing as kind of like an undulation around your hand. It's not really squeeze. It's just like. Mm. Um. I was going to write down this. It is important, but it is not a priority right now. What we came here to do is our first mission. Well, um, we can always ask. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Um, do you know if the library's still open, um, Mr. Orc person? Uh, 
My name is Snat. But please, Miss, Mr. Snat was my father. You can just call me Snat. The library will be open for a couple of more hours, but uh, it tends to close before it gets dark. And we should hurry over that. Um, Asuka would look at the uh, blacksmith and write down, uh, thank you for your offer, but there is some business we must attend to tonight. Perhaps I could see them, her in the morning when we come to pick up uh, Persephone's. Uh, I didn't didn't think about that for a moment. Uh, Headgear. Yeah, he he nods and he says, uh, it seems like you guys are just kind of passing through through town. Um, I just live right here behind the shop, so you guys can come by anytime tonight, or I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll I'll bring my daughter with me. Oh, and Asuka will bring out their coin purse and sort of jiggle it, and you know. Um. Yeah. So I I think I think he he kind of looks at your coin purse and he thinks about it for a second. And he kind of runs his thumb over his tux, tusk again, which is kind of like his thinking gesture and he goes you know I I don't think this was a very interesting opportunity for me let's I'll charge you for the uh, horns but I don't know that I can take money for what I did Asuka will still take out two gold and press it into we don't uh, need to pay him what we're paying him for you said he don't want to pay him let's keep the money Oscar if writes Mr. Down, Blobby could radiate artists. smug patriotism, he'd be radiating <laughs> smug patriotism. <laughs> yeah, if there's one thing people in Jadir appreciate, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, um, he'll take he'll take the money without you know making a fuss, but he you know he doesn't he doesn't like grab at it. He, he'll let you put it in his hand though. Yeah. And the horns, how much do you want for the work? Well, uh, I'll need to see what what kind of metal I use. I'll want to test just a couple of different things. If you're using them for fighting, I want to make sure they're sturdy. Um, I'll give you an estimate. I, I'll say that they probably won't be any more than three gold, but I won't know until I have the material in front Looks of me. Looks like we got a new friend. Fair enough. All right. Well, I'll see you folks in the morning. Or uh, just knock if you need a place to stay. And he'll, without really much fanfare, he'll turn back around and he'll take the pieces of the candelabra that you got and gave him and he'll go over to his forge and he'll begin kind of getting pieces of metal and mumbling to himself and he'll pull out a, a sketchbook and start to kind of like sketch some stuff out. <clears throat> and as we, as we walk out... I wish much you would turn to the rest of the party. Okay. He offered us a place to stay. It's a little less obvious than an inn. Well, I, I think he offered us dinner. Right? Was it staying? I don't think he offered us staying. He said, if you need a place to stay, you know where I am. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, Mr. Blobby just wasn't listening. I apologize. <laughs> Can I do an insight check on Snap? Totally. Because when when they start being really nice to us, no one's nice to Gerbil. Okay. Gerbil <laughs> and nice in Judea. Love that. Poor Gerbil. Love that. Well, maybe he deserves it a little bit. It's the tie. The tie just makes you into a whole new person who doesn't stab people in the rear end. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be sincere. Um... I won't make this a difficult check because I'm not trying to trick you guys. So I'll say that, especially because Gerbil, you are like surprisingly perceptive and in tuned with people's emotions. You could tell that as he was working on Asuka, even though he was being kind of rough, and you could tell that he wasn't necessarily thinking of the piece of armor in front of him as like a person. And so he wasn't checking in and he, he looked, he definitely had like put his head down and it was like, he was just going how to work, going to work. You could tell that while he was working, he was incredibly impressed with what he was looking 
looking at. And he doesn't seem to have any nefarious purpose. He just seems to be rather astounded by what's in front of him, both as someone who in Jadir, as I'm sure Mr. Blobby mentioned while he was playing tour guide, people in Jadir love magic. It's something that there is almost kind of this innate magic that's assumed to be a part of the nation. All of the high ranking officials practice magic. You know, it, it's something that's very special to everyone. So to see such seamless magic in something that he knows very well, which would be armor, you could tell that he was just completely in awe of what was in front of him. It was like he, he was seeing something, it was like he was seeing a miracle in his, in his opinion. In that case, Goebbel will stay silent and see what okay. the party decide to do. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a less obvious than an in. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, so right. I have no problem with this. And we can get your sparrow painted. I and mean, she'll take this moment to give you a match, right? Uh, you're all right. Asuka nods. Mm. All right. And uh, we'll look at uh, Mr. Mr. Blobby. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, whatever you decide. I'm illiterate. I don't know. <laughs> Lead yeah. the way to the library. Mr. Blobby using that. <laughs> Arista Mache told Mr. Blobby that illiterate meant stupid and ill-educated. Yeah, that's, that's what, what he is. <laughs> He's never been to uh, like, school. He's he's, yeah. he's very very dumb. He's kind of like that's what that means. Okay. Man, that sounded one hundred percent like snark. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of like yeah okay. He's very nervous, so he's just doing what the adults want to do basically. Okay. Yeah, you can head to the library, and as you get to the library, it is just as astoundingly beautiful as you imagine it would be it has these beautiful marble columns that have gold inlay that kind of sparkle as the sun begins to set and it's a very it's a very ostentatious building that's set apart from the other so as you're walking towards it it takes up its own space it's meant to be something that you look at and as you walk in there is a banner hanging from the, in the entrance that says, um, summer readathon has begun. <laughs> and you wait, see wait. a- Can I acquire, <laughs> can I, for, by, by reading a certain number of books, can I acquire a certain amount of stamps to get a free pizza hot coupon? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What, yes. what is this? What? what? <laughs> they give you they give you a little book it they give you a little paper booklet and every time you read a book they you come back and they give you a stamp and it's a path and as you get to certain markers in the path they give you a reward so if you read five books then you get a free mary mcdonald's uh mick hot pie and oh, how do they know if you read the book we used to do that as a kid, and all we got was, you know, the satisfaction of the librarian. You got food? Well, this is Jadir, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I don't know about any other schools, but, like, at my schools in the U.S., like, we always had some sort of reading program, and you get, like, free, like, a free pizza coupon, or, like, uh, <laughs> you got we really got far. someone saying, well done, you're ahead of other people. If we got, you. like, the best thing in the whole year, if we were the one person that did something better than everyone else in the whole year, we'd maybe get a voucher to go to a bookshop. We got a certificate. Oh, no, no. Most of the time, we got, yeah, a certificate that someone had made in Word. Yeah. I, I was I like, read I, read, I read Don Quixote in fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh my all god! All I got for being one of the best readers in my school was bragging rights, so that doesn't work. I got you know, told by a teacher that I was reading ahead of my level. I wasn't allowed yeah. to participate in the reading competitions at my school because I always read too much. <laughs> 
So I was banned. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was also at a school where one of my parents worked. So it's kind of like, oh, you're reading well ahead of your... Well, of course you are. You've, you've, you go home and you've got another teacher. <laughs> so yes, as, as you approach this library, there is a banner that says Summer Readathon has begun. And there is a gaggle of school children. And they all have books under their arm and they, they politely bow their heads as you walk by up the stairs and into the library. I wiggle pseudopods at them. They go, hello, hi, hello, thank you, welcome, hi, enjoy your day, hi. Uh, and then one of, them, one of them is really tall and he's like, have a good day. <laughs> you <Have> too! <laughs> uh, at least bringing our little tariff will not be an issue um, here. I know it's probably not necessary, but could, as we enter the library, could Gerbil sort of splinter off and try and sneak in so no one knows that he's entered? Yeah, do it. Roll me a stealth check. <laughs> Is Gerbil a closet library? <laughs> not one. Okay, so as you walk into the library, you you try and go into stealth mode. So you kind of, as soon as you go in the door, you intend to like put your back against the wall and like slink by. And what you didn't see was that with the gaggle of school children, there was one that was tying their shoe right inside the door. And as you like hunch up to go over, you just trip over this child. And the child's like, ah! I'd be like, shh. No, you just tripped over me. What? You shh. And he thinks something terrifying, thinks something terrifying, thinks something terrifying. The hydras are, are coming. Up? No, 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 that was me. The hydras are coming. There are no hydras here. And he, the little kid looks over to you guys. And then he I looks wiggle up. suit of pods. Hi. I don't know where you're from, but in Jadir, when you trip over someone, you say sorry. Oh, I'm so, and I blob over. It's like I'm so sorry. I I'm from here. They're tourists, and they haven't really got the hang of things yet. I'm so sorry. I mean, you know, they're not from here. They're from Missouri, and you know what the manners are like over there. And I basically just like talk myself over them, <laughs> so they will just continually apologizing. This kid is just glaring at Gerbil as you talk. Now I'm like, sure he puffs his cheeks out and he's like, "I'm sure Ricky was just about to apologize." Ricky, Ricky, and I will just like as soon as Pod just flings out, grabs Gerbil by the head, and is like, "Apologize for tripping over the nice young person, Ricky." They were in the path. I don't think I did anything wrong. Okay. Uh, because arms are crossed. <laughs> oh. um, just, just the goo is slowly creeping across, like forward, just like. An apology under a duress isn't really an apology. Just apologize. I would agree. How's <laughs> <laughs> it get looks at the kid and is like? I know, I know, but you know, teaching the manners starts somewhere. If I had eyes, I'd roll is this them. Your angry? Is this your child? Is this your son? <laughs> no, I'm I'm guiding these tourists. It's a diplomacy thing. I don't know. Well, I kind of drew the short straw in my town. If my mommy ever took me on a vacation, I would never be so rude. I'm sure you would never be so rude. You were brought up correctly, in the right place. Picks his You're nose a naughty boy. Picks his nose and wipes it on his trousers. Just uses the grip on his head to just shove him away. It's like, <laughs> and prestigitates his trousers. It's like, yeah, okay. The the run off. he 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 reaches down and he picks up his books that he spilled and he like tucks them under his arm and he looks at you, Mister Blobby, and he's like, "Welcome home." And then he walks out. Thank you so much. I am truly sorry. Just like, like the top of Mister Blobby's like pile shape just flops forward onto the floor just like just like a cat falling over just like ah are you okay 
You all right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm good. No, 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 no. To to Mr. Bobby. You oh. ran off. I was gonna say. I was like, what? Ricky Maru. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bobby is just like like a, a a bigger but smaller puddle, just kind of mumbling into the floor. And it's weird because Mr. Blobby doesn't have a mouth and usually their voice just kind of emanates from them, but you can like tell from the sound that they are deliberately mumbling into the floor. <laughs> oh. And then they will kind of like reshape themselves and be like, okay, so we were going to look at books. Where did he go? Ned is just looking around with stars in his eyes. <laughs> Mr. Blobby is like swiveling on the spot looking for Gerbil. Where did he go? All right, uh, we're looking for books. Who, I start, who are you looking for? Where did Ricky Maru go? He looks around to everyone and he goes, who is Ricky Maru? Oh, oh, um, I don't know. He assaulted that child and then he just like ran away. <laughs> Can I make a perception check to see if I can find Gerbil? Yeah, go ahead and roll a perception check and, and Scrat, I'll let you des decide whether or not it's good enough for your stealth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Meets beats, right? So you just see um, Gerbil uh, uh, heading towards the... Um, do you? Ha I don't know what the library's like, but if there's like a red section, no talking... Absolute silence area. Um, that's, that's this is going. a fucking library, so it's all red section. <laughs> oh my goodness! Really, you don't have like staggered parts where like people can talk about books, and then places where like some talk is okay, but not a lot, and then deathly silence. We'll kill you. Section. I mean, I guess the, it, like the, the lobby is the talkative part, but then when you're in the stacks, you know, in the 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 reading area, it's assumed that you're quiet. Mr. Blobby is just going to very, very quickly, just because like, 20 feet of movement. Mr. Blobby is not fast, so he's just going to cast a message and a little whisper will just appear in Gerbil's ear like, If you don't get back here, I will eat you. Get back here now! Am I allowed to respond to that? Am I allowed to respond to a simple response, you, right? You, you would be able to reply to this message, yeah. yeah and you would know that. We've, we've used them before. The, the response would be... <laughs> And then Mr. Blobby is going to cast Mage Hand and try and grab him by the back of the head. <laughs> just like, ah! just slowly try to start dragging him backwards. I weigh more than five pounds. Yes. But still, there's like magic fingers digging into your head and attempting. <laughs> Gerbil will come back. Oh, good. Whoa. Mr. Blobby, Mr. Blobby will just like squelch right up to be like, I live here. Just act like someone else for just a minute, please. There's, there's anxious vibrations. Can, can I go and read now? Asuka is going to walk up to both of them and pat them on their shoulders, or Mr. Blobby's general. <laughs> just just the top. Just the top. <laughs> now play nice, children. <laughs> no. Um, let us not get too split up. Gerbil, would you like me to come with you? She's got a disadvantage from chat. Thank you, Isra. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gerbil will uh, shrug, I guess. If you want, I'm going to go and start seeing if there's anything interesting to read. Are we supposed to be quiet in here? I'm going to stay with Persephone and just like blobs off and angrily leans against the rest of his leg, just like, ah! Ned looks to you, Asuka, uh, and he says, uh, can I, can I go look at stuff too? <clears throat> um, 
Ozzy will write down. Just stay within sight of at least one of us if you are to go away from anyone else. Okay. okay. I'll, as you... I'll oh, be researching ahead. humans, Ned. If you want to come along with us, we can compare research. Why don't we split up and then meet up and see what we find? Oscar will write down, perhaps we should not say the H word out loud. Why? We're in a library. We can be researching whatever we want, can't we? Got a point. Someone was just executed in another kingdom for <laughs> research. Got a point. Both of you have points. <laughs> Fine. Well, let's use a code word then. Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> do monkeys exist in this world? I don't know. Well, <laughs> do. I don't see why not. Yeah, they're just animals. Yeah, monkeys. We're all just we're all just evolved monkeys. <laughs> all right. He looks. To, he squats down. Gerbil. He's getting real serious. He squats down. And he's like, "All right. I think it'd be best if we split up and kind of come at it from different angles. I'm interested to see what you pull up." Why don't we meet back here in 30 minutes? Five minutes Oscar minutes. looks at Gerbil, looks at Ned, looks at Gerbil. Ned's like squatted down, you know, like on his on his uh on his toes. He's doing like a a squat and he like has his his face in his hands like this and he's looking off across the all the books in front of him. Mr. Bobby has leant so far into Aristomache's leg that uh, he is now wrapped around it. So she's just standing in, in goo. You know you are heavy on my hoof. I need a hug! Oh, come here then. And <laughs> she will bend down. <laughs> just like slightly <laughs> engulfs while making sure there's breathing space for the baby. Thank you, because I was really yeah. like, uh, yeah. uh, trying to make an air hole. Engulfs like just under the baby, so kind of like a goo sarong. <laughs> just for a minute, just like, okay, oh, it's so tiring, everything so much, just like burbling nonsense. <laughs> and this is my life every day with you. Uh, Asa thinks we all need to have so a nice sit down. Uh, now, now you know what my life with you is like. Uh, I say sorry! Yes, I know, but sometimes it's it's frustrating. Even okay. though you have an apology, you still do the same thing. Fair enough. Oh. And Mr. Bobby just kind of like descends until he like reforms next to us. The match is like, thank you. What I repeat to myself often is, relax. You are in control of nothing. There's just like a high pitched noise, kind of like a mosquito now emanating from Mr. Blobby as the vibrations increase. It's like, ah! Mr. Blobby's brain right now is just like, <laughs> it's the volcano erupting. Once you realize that things are well out of your control, there's no point trying to control them. Ricky Maru will always be Ricky Maru, just as you will always be you. Well, yes, that doesn't mean anything! And just, just high pitch noises again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it just kind of quietens down to just anxious muttering. It's like, <laughs> Gerbil, what are you looking at? <laughs> You're muted again. Well, I'm thinking if we've only got 30 minutes... God, then, you're going to get through one page. <laughs> then we should probably mostly just gather books and compare, like, research how valid we think the sources will be before we start actually, like, reading. Mm. Asuka looks at you, like, tilts their head. And if they could say, huh, they would say, huh. You see that show just kind of... <laughs> 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 just... 
And then they just sort of nod their head and shake. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Can we check books out? Because then we could just grab a whole bunch of titles and take them all back to the hotel room. Or that person's place or somewhere else we can hide you can ask like... <laughs> you can find a librarian well i know how to find a librarian in a library first thing i've learned about libraries is how to get the attention of a library no. ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right <I> <laughs> As you scream, a bunch of people look over at you with concern, and uh, a woman in like a three-piece suit, a dragonborn woman, comes over and she's like, "Oh, um, are you okay?" Yeah, sorry, I just saw someone crack that spine over there. Um, I'm glad you're here. Actually, I could really use your assistance. Um, okay. Is this the kind of library where we can check books out? Of course. Is there a limit to that? Well, do you have a library card? For this library? Yes. No, but I've got one for some of the other cities. Do you? I think I think he actually would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um she says as long it's a as it's a library card for the libraries in this city unfortunately every city has their own library code it has to do with taxes everyone pays taxes everyone pays taxes here everyone oh, that libraries are funded by tax what see that's yeah. that that yeah that's the loophole <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, are libraries not funded by tax dollars in the UK? Yeah, they are. Yeah, but they like, are. why do libraries pay taxes? I think you're thinking that the library pays the taxes, but then no, yeah. yeah. how we're, many No, we're paid by taxes, so you know it's only for the people who pay taxes in a city. Because oh, yeah. we're funded by taxes, yeah. What about people who are visiting? Surely you get the scholars who come from miles around to read your books because your library is so great. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Yes, if you have a, a researcher visa, then of course you can check out books. But for people who are just in town for a couple of days, unfortunately, you are not able to take books from the library. But we do have a wonderful reading room that is open as long as we are. Do we have anything still from annoying knows everything but nothing, ma'am? Dr. Sporin. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think he gave you anything that would have linked you to him. No, he mainly just gave us, like, pamphlets on Judea. He gave you, like, maps and stuff, yeah. Which I think are in me at the moment. Okay, that seems very reasonable, actually. Um, and where is the reading room, please? Well, there are reading rooms located on every floor. And she points. There's one over there, and you can see there's there's a door, and in the door there's kind of just a large area that has chairs and desks, and you can see people writing and, and reading, and there's some cozy, comfy couches and chairs. And she says, or you can just, you know, read wherever you want. Sometimes people will just sit down in the middle of the stacks and begin to read. Are there any rooms away from the main area? Uh, somewhere where perhaps silence is enforced? It's very noisy around here. I just heard someone well, screaming. That was you um, that was screaming, but we are in the lobby. The reading rooms are, are a bit quieter and uh, the fourth, the third and fourth floors tend to be less busy if you're looking for a bit of privacy. Thank you very much. You're welcome and welcome to Jadir. It appears that you are not from here. Uh, no, no, I came from uh, North. You're muted, Tommy. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just. Oh, I, I came from. I was just laughing. She, she looks at you perplexedly, uh, as she, as she thinks about what is north and it is just the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! 
Mr. Blobby but is she... now like trying to hide behind Arista Mache's legs. Like, I don't, I'm not here. I don't know them. I'm not here. Oh, oh my but she, she nods anyways. And she says, of course. Yes. Well, uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Just look for those of us that have these. And she, she tightens a, she has a red bow that's tied around her neck, you know, with a scarf. She's like, just look for anyone with a red scarf. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And when she goes, you're going to be like, okay, so we can't take the books legally. No, 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 no. No. Gerbil looks at Asuka. Asuka just shakes their head. Eckerbal. I can't even steal things in the name of good. Ah. Oh. Let's, let, let's go, let's go read things quietly so that we can find things out and leave again, please. <laughs> I'm gonna write down. Take only knowledge from this institution, Ricky Maru. That's what I want to <laughs> do. I want to take all the knowledge that's written down on all in the papers. Your <laughs> in your brain. What brain? Ned turns to you, Gerbil, because he feels that you are the only one who understands his scholarly ways. And he says, okay, I'm going to hit up the sections on fairy tales and myths. What are you going for? Hmm. Perhaps, um... There's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there's got to be a section on, um extinct species there's a whole bunch of species right so um yeah i'll go for history ancient history and archaeology sounds good all right I, let's meet back here I, let's meet on the third floor in 30 minutes oh yeah yeah i will t i will take a newspaper clipping hmm. and ask I... gonna... oh go ahead no no go on Oh, Asuka's just gonna stand guard and just keep an eye out for anyone. Oh God, just, we've already we've already like brought so much attention to ourselves, but <laughs> <laughs> thanks to oh, yeah, people. Wait. But <laughs> Asuka would mostly like to sort of keep guard and keep an eye out for anyone who seems a little too interested in us or any other events. So they're okay. not really looking at anything. Mr. Bobby is just going to follow Aristomacho. I'm, I'm really, I, I've seen this in movies in America. They have like the screen and you do like a scrolly thing and it oh, goes. Oh, microfiche. Yeah, microfiche. That's, what, that's what it's called. Yeah, that's what I want to look up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. It's like a thing with a candle, you know, and you cast and it does it. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start with, with Gerbil. Gerbil, you're looking for ancient history and anthropology or archaeology? Archaeology, right? Yeah. Why don't you roll me a investigation check? Sure thing. Roll me two. One for each category. Oh. And tell me which one is which. I'll let you choose since I said it too late. Uh, I will go in the order that you said them. So that was ancient history and archaeology. Okay. So the archaeology section is quite bland. Um, it's mainly about it's mainly about Laka, just because so much of Laka has unchanged over time that it tends to be the place where people will do archaeological digs, and it's you know it's like fun and sexy for tourists and everything. So there's a lot of scholarly research done on that nation. Um, other than that, everything else is just like pretty boring, just standard. You can't really find anything speculative. It's all pretty like based in fact, and there doesn't seem to be anything that sounds like you don't find anything that indicates the type of research that Dr. Sporin was doing with his partner. In ancient history, you definitely find a lot more 
a lot more material. It goes back much, much further. And in particular, you find a book that is on, it's, it's kind of a speculative book. It's, it's like ancient history, but it's also, there's a bit, it was written by like a philosopher who was kind of drawing on anthropology as well as like religion and kind of evolution. And he was kind of drawing on a lot of things. And it is a alternative timeline to the evolution of modern day species. I'll have a quick flick through. Uh, is there a bit at the back about the author? Yes. Yes, there is. I'll have a quick read. Okay. Let me get my list of names up, and then I will tell you what his name is. And then, why doesn't everyone else make uh, rolls as well, just while I'm, while I'm getting up my... Um, yeah, perception. Yeah. Um, I don't like it because uh, I'm pretty much just gonna bimble about around Aristomache while uh, she's doing her thing. So, would I make perception just because it's if anything catches my eye, I'm not like looking for stuff, it's not so much investigation because I have no idea like what I'm looking for. It's just like you know, as I'm passing bookshelves, like, oh, well, no, no. yeah. Yeah, perception so, check is fine in that okay. case. Hey, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Aristomachi, why don't you roll me an investigation check as well? Tell me what it is. Just one? Yeah, just one. Uh, that's an 18 plus 4. 28. Great. All right. So, Gerbil, at the back of the book, there is about the author. The author's name is Poppy Morgan. And it has a, it doesn't have any character art. <laughs> There's no drawing. And it says that Poppy Morgan is a well-respected scholar and it has a list of about 10 different titles that she has written and none of them sound particularly interesting. They're like the ancient history of Lake Jadiva and its soil bed content, you know, just like really boring stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But she is from Jadir, she is from Fraga. Did she and study says, in Jadir? She did, yes. Okay. Could be important if they study in like Waka or something. Maybe they might have different opinions, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll take that book. Okay. All right. And let's go with Aristomachi. Uh, with, you had like a 23, right? 22. 22. You find newspaper articles. So these are all, they're mainly local with a couple of national headlines. They would be things that made, that made, you know, big, big waves. And you find very, very old clippings. They're like wrapped in plastic. So you can't actually touch the actual newspaper. That's how old they are. And they're from probably a couple hundred years ago. I mean, this this library is very big, and they have stuff from from many from centuries ago. And it is some newspaper clippings from what was considered at the time one of the most important events of all five nations, which was a meeting of the five rulers. And the rulers at the time were obviously completely different, though it was King Bluebeard, the current king of Jadir. It was his like great, great, great grandfather because they've been in control for like ever. But it was a meeting that took place in Laka about 250 years ago, it looks like. And there was quite a bit of fanfare about it. People visited it from all over the nations to see this great union. And it is, there is a sketching of all of the different rulers as they kind of stand in a circle and are looking out on a, on a crowd. And it's a very like rough drawing, you know, it's meant to be kind of an eye-catching sketch. So the rulers are in more detail than in the crowd, but it was quite a big deal. And other than that, you don't really find anything either. Why is the meeting with the five rings caught my attention? That's uh, like the five, well, five rings, haha, <laughs> uh, the five, uh, 
rulers caught my attention. Because this has never happened before. In all of your time, you've never heard of a situation in which the five rulers have met. Because for the most part, because there's no war, there's no obvious war, the nations are pretty independent of one another. There is generally no like yearly meeting. They don't all get together. There is sometimes dignitary events where they all meet, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, like, you know, Laka will have something to do with Messier, Seslu, or mm -hmm. Anthos. But this seems incredibly strange to you that all five of them would be in the same place at once. Is there no like, National Enquirer, where they like turn out like crazy news, like alien spotted, and is this famous person a slime? And like, yeah. not that you're gonna find here, okay. not probably not in Jadir, would you find anything like that? Okay, we're more sophisticated, here, yeah, a little more sophisticated, mm -hmm. probably probably more, more useful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everything so here is for the aesthetic, not for you know practicality. And Asuka got 19 on their perception. Right. So are you staying on the main floor or are you kind of walking through the library? Because everyone went, you know, to different floors and different areas, except for Mr. Blobby and you. So are you guys kind of patrolling the main floor? Are you standing by the door? What are you doing? Oh, I'm with Aristomacha. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And I follow Ned, Aristomacha. Is Ned with um is Ned with uh Gerbil? Nope, Ned went out oh. on his own. Okay, then I think Asuka is patrolling, um, checking in sort of with each group, making sure Ned is within sight of at least one of the other party members. Okay, so you uh, want I mean, to Asuka feels it. Yeah, Asuka feels some... Uh, like, Gerbil can take care of, of, of himself. Um, Asuka feels some... Um, you know, in a fight, Gerbil can take care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me correct that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and take care of others. Um, but Asuka, um, Asuka um, feels some responsibility for Ned. Okay. Well, so you, you are following Ned at a distance and you see that he goes up. He kind of goes all over the place and he's grabbing books and reading, flipping through them, and then putting them back on the reshelf cards. You know, he's not putting them back on the shelves because even though you think that that's helpful, it's not. Put them on the reshelf cards. So he's putting them back on the reshelf cards. And you, as you're watching him, you're also kind of putting, you're, you're looking everywhere. You're able to pay attention to a lot of different things. You're not so singular in your focus. And as you are watching, you notice that there is a librarian who is shelving books when Ned walks by her. And Ned kind of mutters something to her under his breath. And she goes, oh, no, of course not, and kind of moves out of his way. And as he walks by, she looks at him. And she goes back to reading her, looking at the shelves. And then she does a quick double take. And then she walks away. Asuka will walk over to Ned. Uh, hey, what's up? Asuka will write down, stay calm, and I'll look around. He and immediately he... begins to look around. I, I, Asuka will, will pat, grab the top of Ned's head <laughs> and just keep it focused forward. <laughs> Um, that librarian seemed to recognize you. I don't think that's possible. I've never been here before. I've like never even left my home. Does your dad know you're gone? I mean, at this point, I think he knows I'm gone. I, it's been like a week. Did he um, know that? Did he know that you left? <laughs> um, and Ned rocks back and forth on his on his feet, and he's like, "Um, I left him a note that said, like, not to worry that I was just, you know, going on an adventure." 
some friends. Asuka sort of shoulders. It could be nothing, but it is always best to be prepared. I did not like, I have a bad feeling about the look she gave you. Let us find the others quickly. We may not have as much time to research as we want. Okay. Uh, all right. And he just kind of starts grabbing books at random and he looks at you and he's like, okay, where, where, I, where should we go? I mean, we can't check these books out. Like, what do you want me to do? Aren't you glad I made you carry all those rocks the whole way here? <laughs> His eyes light up and he goes, look, are you, are you saying that we should steal these books? I'm at that conundrum. Yeah, yeah, Asuka, Asuka writes down, Borrow with the intention to return. <laughs> oh my goodness. Other dad has been reduced to stealing. <laughs> Borrow the with the intention gonna have an to aneurysm. return. If we read them quickly and leave them somewhere else at someone else's house. Oh. So, ah. Well, we have to figure out this baby thing. And that's like mission priority number one. Um, Speaking of baby, how is, how is, uh, Oh god, what name did I give them? Krios. 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 Yeah, Krios. 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 Krios is fine. He's a quiet baby. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful baby boy. He's quite quiet. He doesn't get too fussy. Must be my, my zen nature. Your zen nature, yeah. You know, actually, why don't you... This is something that maybe we could have done before, but now seems like a good time to do it. Why don't you roll a nature check? Or even a history check. I'll let you do one or the other. Right, I'm going to see which one's the best. Uh, nature zero. History for history. 22. Okay. So you remember growing up, you were taught a lot about wild animals. And one of the things that you learned is, is as, a, as a minotaur, you know, you grew up in this encampment where children were always making noise and they were being super you know loud and whatever and babies were crying and you remember kind of as you're like going through your um through your lessons of the world and everything you learned that not all babies get to be quite as loud as you all and that's because some animals are prey and it is in their best interest to be quiet and to not stand out. And so they learn ways to communicate with their parents, their needs in ways that are less obvious than overt crying and screaming. Oh no, do I have a prey baby? How is it communicating with me? Panic. <laughs> He seems fine. I mean, you've been feeding him like three times a day. Is he getting, he's getting nice and fat. Is he getting like he's fat yeah. baby legs? His, his cheeks are super rosy. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Asuka will, uh, I think will, well, who, who on, on Asuka sort of rounds. Uh, does Asuka know who is, would be closest to them? Whether it be Gerbil or Aristomachi and Mr. Blobby? Uh, Gerbil would probably be closer to you. Aristomachi and, and Mr. Blobby are going to be in the basement, like in okay. the lower level. So Asuka so would... Newspapers are always stored. Yeah. Asuka will sort of pull Ned behind, uh, behind him and sort of just do the creep through the stacks and just like peer out and look around and then head to the next stacks um, okay. to get to Gerbil. Very Scooby-Doo. Roll me a <laughs> stealth check. Okay. This is probably not going to go great. 
Uh, Ooh. yep. Nope. Not great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you as, even though you were just freshly touched up, you're still yeah. just a suit of armor, you know, and you're quite heavy. So you kind of make noise no matter what, even though in your mind you may feel that you're being stealthy. There's just kind of a natural, there's just a natural aura about you that people tend to notice because you are a full suit of armor that's moving. <laughs> And even though armor is not uncommon, to see like a full getup with a mask is quite strange. And so as you're moving from the stacks, it's not, there aren't a lot of people around who are staring at you, but you're definitely making noise. And Ned is kind of like, he's slow and he's shuffling his feet and he's not being quite as urgent in his, in his movement as you would like. <laughs> Um, ask, uh... <laughs> I think, um, ask, ask a wood get. <laughs> so, so I think we're getting some, Not we're getting some. Sounds <laughs> <back. laughs> like someone's dropping pots. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kept hearing it. <laughs> I was like, um, so that's... sorry. I was okay. doing like the atmospheric noise of armor. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's, really great. that's what you sound like. That's what yeah. you sound like. Um, uh, there's nothing really to be done for it. Mostly Asuka's is just trying to keep an eye out and see who's looking at them, who's taking note of them. Um, and we'll make, we'll, you know, make our way to Gerbil. Okay. Gerbil, what are you doing? I've been making a list. I'm making okay. a list. Oh, First semester, you're muted. Oh no, you're not talking to us. Okay. <laughs> I've been making a list. Okay. Of all the books that I want to read, and all of their sources, and putting t t uh, putting tallies next to them on pri to determine priority. The ones with the most ticks are the ones that I want to read first, as I realise I have limited time in this library, and I'm not allowed to steal the books. This is, is so adorable, I'm dying. Is this uh, books relating to the history that you're looking for, or just books that you're also interested in on a personal level? Uh, I'll keep it relevant. <laughs> keep, What'd you say? Keep, keep it relevant. Keep it relevant to, the, it relevant. to okay. the humans. Okay. As you are making this list, you see Asuka and Ned come at you from one of the stacks. And Ned is clutching his backpack. He's not even, it's not on his back anymore. He's carrying it like this. And you can see that it's a bit distended. And he creeps towards you and he goes, Gerbil, Gerbil. There's like, maybe a problem. Maybe there's a problem. Are you two trying to sneak? Well, yes. yeah, because this Cause isn't Asuka how you do it. Look, that, like someone recognized me yeah, for yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how. Look, when you start getting low and being quiet, that's suspicious. We're in a public place. Blend into the crowd. Head held high. Look normal. <laughs> Here, I'll dip into my disguise kit and pull out a pair of fake glasses for him. Put these on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he puts them on and he, he like adjusts them. Do I look any different? Well, yeah. Everyone knows if you put glasses on, you basically completely hide your identity. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll have the three of you make me a perception check. Just, just three? Ooh. Oh. Cause you guys are in the, you guys are in We're the lower in the level. basement. Alec, why did, when did we go to a basement? <laughs> Cause that's where the <laughs> newspapers are kept. Okay, cool. Gerbil I mean, is too busy like, trying. You know, we're like, the, the X-Files, we've gone to the basement because that's where they keep all the shit. Okay, cool. Asuka, as Gerbil is oh. chastising Ned and you, technically, really, for your yeah, poor, Asuka's not really paying too much your attention. Your poor self, you hear the click of heels on the ground. Oh, no. And you hear someone say, he was just over here. I know, I saw him, I recognized him. It was the boy from the from the... Okay, the two of From you leave. Posters. I'll handle this. Go, go, go. 
How's it gonna, how's it gonna, it's worried that Gerbil's gonna straight up kill these people. <laughs> um, Asuka will write down, no killing. <laughs> Promise. You may take books with There's... the intent to return. What I'm allowed to do? I made a whole, I made a list. I made a <laughs> list. <laughs> Situation change. <laughs> ah, double standards. It's okay with someone else. Just Go on, get out of here. Uh, and Asuka will sort of lead Ned off to try and find the others. Stop sneaking. Look normal. <laughs> Asuka will stop sneaking. <laughs> try to look normal. But we'll still peer around uh shelves just in case there's someone with you know ill intent looking for them okay and the two of you in the basement why don't you roll me a check as well okay is this a perception yes perception check 23 okay 13 plus 7. i think mr blobby would have got bored very quickly and would kind of be under the table probably just like buffing at ristomache's hooves (laughs) Ooh, shiny hooves. Just kind of like I'm just you know I'm hungry. And she needs a pedicure. Some, just like, just like with his form, just like like a gel pedicure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it color? Oh, also, what can it be blue? Blue glitter. It would probably be some kind of glitter, just being like pressed <laughs> into the you know the hoof material. Yeah, no, I'm liking this. I like this. You know, like when you pick like... up anything at Lush and you've got like glitter on your hands for days? Yeah. Yep. That kind of thing. Love awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. Rista so, Machi, Rista Machi, as you were going through these old clippings and you're reading about this very strange meeting of the five rulers, and then just like also other stuff, like you read about how like old man Bobbert like was accused of stealing uh, old lady. M- Martina's cows, you know, just like stuff like that, you know, petty, petty squalls. You hear the sound of quite a few footsteps ringing up the stairs as if they're leaving from the basement upstairs. And there's a sense of urgency in these footsteps as they're ringing that definitely draws your attention. And as these footsteps are ringing up the stairs in a bit of a hurry, and as this these clicking heels are coming closer to Ned Gerbel and Asuka, and the woman is saying, I just saw him, he was just over here. He was just reading books. That's where we will end for today. Oh. oh. We didn't have like a secret movie recap or anything today. No, no, because I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I do my prep approximately 30 minutes before the show begins. And and... I can... Oh, oh, oh but, but could, we have, could we have an after credit scene, Heavenly? Mm-hmm. But I haven't written anything. Okay. Improv it. Okay, okay, improv, okay, improv, what, improv. What's what doing? <laughs> improv, okay. So as this, these heels are clicking, what is that sound? These heels are clicking and she's saying, I just saw him over here. We leave the library. And we journey to Athos, the place where no one has been to yet. And we see this strange structure that is dark and it is crooked and it doesn't make sense and we see inside one of the hands of King Padraig, and he is sitting at a circular table, and in front of him is a map of the five kingdoms, and there is a pin in Talonford, and there is a pin in Serenity Pass. And as he sits there, his hands interlaced in front of him, a blink pigeon appears. I didn't think that we would use blink pigeons as much as we do, but here they are again. A blink pigeon appears with a small note. And he looks at the note and grabs a pin and sticks it in the red peaks. Oh no! The truck is panic! We're so fucked. We're so fucked. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're still ahead of them. We're still ahead of them. We're okay. I like this much. 
<laughs> it's enough! I love it. And that That's is where we'll end today's session. Thank you. Oh, the cat me. gave us up. I hate it. <laughs> so we Thank made a friend. So. And I've still got his ladder. I've yeah, got you plan. do. I formulated oh, boy. a plan in two minutes. It's going to be great. Oh, good. Well, we'll have to get that plan next week. Uh-huh. I'm worried. <laughs> Everyone should be very nervous. I'm yeah. very worried. About what this plan is. No, yeah. Very nervous. It's I'm pretty fear. sure Mr. Blobby is just like, he's set on like anxious right now. Like the clock is set at anxious and afraid. And that's it. I am wearing a shirt that says no fear. And then there's a panel of Gerbil saying, I have a plan. And then my one shirt fear. says one fear. <laughs> Oh, please, it would say many fears. Many fears. All the fear. Fear, it just says fear. Fear. Fear increasing. <laughs> oh, I need to draw that. I'm going to put that on the Discord. <laughs> so, everyone, our raid pro today is I may be illiterate, but I remember things. Um, Yay! <laughs> I, hope, that out I hope you've all had a wonderful <laughs> session. Um, <laughs> We will be back at the same time next week for more Tooth Tail and Talcum Powder. But if you come back in two hours' time, you'll see Riders on the Storm. Um, it should be quite a boring episode Riders today. I would, probably wouldn't even worry about it. It's probably nothing. Was that uh, <laughs> Heavenly? I saw the the thing there. Was that a hand raise or was it just peace peace out? I was saying two hours. Two hours. Thank you. Two, two um, hours. I, I immediately went to. I don't know why, but the the typically rush hour Jackie Chan dance. You know, that's immediately what I think when yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's all the things. So, um, yeah, <laughs> until next time. Oh, no, hang on. Links, 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 links. Links, 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 links. Please check out all of the links. Um, there's, there's places you can contact us, places you can find us, places you can support us, places you can find and support our sponsors, and, uh, places you can find lots of discounts for lots of tabletop goods. Um, very thankful to Mage Hand Paris and Bird and the Storm Publishing as they make this all possible. Until next time, everyone, keep evoking emotions. Bye. Bye. Oh,